Today we're going to learn about the story of Guru Purnima. Guru Purnima meaning celebrated on the full moon day of the Ashada month June to July, Guru Purnima is a highly significant day in Hinduism. It's a time to express deep respect and gratitude to gurus who act as guiding lights and knowledge givers. The word guru itself translates to dispeller of darkness, which highlights the role they play in removing ignorance and illuminating the path towards enlightenment. Traditionally, the day honors the revered sage Vyasa, known for compiling and editing many foundational Hindu texts like the Mahabharata and the Vedas. The rich tradition of Guru Shishya is celebrated where the students acknowledge the immense debt that they owe to their gurus for their knowledge and spiritual growth. It's a day for offerings, prayers, and acts of service to gurus seeking their continued blessings and guidance on the lifelong journey of learning and self-discovery. Significance of Guru Purnima Guru Purnima, a cherished tradition, stems from various stories found in different spiritual teachings. According to one belief, Lord Shiva shared his wisdom with people on this day, making him the first teacher. Another tale tells of Veda Vyasa's birth, who on Guru Purnima shared the teachings of the Vedas with his four students. The essence of Guru Purnima lies in honoring teachers who guide individuals from ignorance to understanding, highlighting the importance of knowledge and wisdom in spiritual growth. It reminds us of the power of learning and encourages the sharing of knowledge as a means of growth. The importance of Guru Purnima extends beyond a religious or spiritual event. It has become a cultural celebration that transcends social and religious boundaries. On this day, we witness a beautiful display of collective appreciation where individuals from all around unite in order to honor their teachers and mentors. It serves as a powerful reminder of the transformative impact that teachers in their various roles have on our lives. Guru Purnima is a day dedicated to acknowledging the fundamental role educators play in shaping not only individuals but society. Whether it's through temple visits, seeking blessings at ashrams, or simply expressing heartfelt gratitude, Guru Purnima supports a collective recognition of the debt we owe to those who illuminate our minds and our passions. This celebration highlights the importance of Guru Purnima as a time to honor and express gratitude towards our teachers, mentors, and guides who selflessly impart knowledge and wisdom, shaping our paths and destinies. In essence, this celebration becomes a powerful communal expression of appreciation. It strengthens the bond of respect and gratitude that connect us across generations, which ensures the continued transmission of knowledge and wisdom. Why is Guru Purnima also known as Vyasa Purnima? This day is also known as Vyasa Purnima and commemorated as the birth anniversary of Veda Vyasa, the author and a character in the Vedic magnum opus Mahabharata. Some of the notable gurus in Hinduism are Sri Madhavacharya, Adi Shankara and Sri Ramanuja Acharya.
Your real guru is truly within. He is the one who dispels all fear and ignorance. As Ramakrishna Paramahamsa says, He alone is the true teacher who is illumined by the light of true knowledge. Your guru helps you connect to the guru within. He resides in your Vishuddha chakra located on the throat and awakens when you surrender to your higher self. Guru Purnima Vrata Kada Veda Vyasa Muni, the compiler of the Mahabharata, was born to sage Parashara, the author of the Vishnu Purana and Satyavati, on an island called Kalpi in the Yamuna River, as mentioned in the Vishnu Purana. It is said that Lord Vishnu desired the knowledge of the Vedas to be transformed into script form since until then this vast knowledge was only available orally. Thus, Veda Vyasa is regarded as an extension of Lord Vishnu, born to classify the Vedas and work on other ancient Hindu texts. Vyasa's father, Sage Bharashara, was the grandson of Sage Vashishta. Pleased with Sage Bharashara's penance, Lord Shiva granted him a boon that his son would be revered and well known for his knowledge, and that his son would be a Brahma Rishi equivalent to Sage Vashishta. Legend has it that Veda Vyasa's mother Satyavati conceived him and instantly gave birth to Vyasa. Veda Vyasa Muni was also known as Dwaipayana, meaning island born, and due to his dark complexion, he was also named Krishna. As he grew up, Vyasa left home to tutor and gain knowledge under Lord Brahma Narad Muni and the four Kumaras. It is said that Veda Vyasa Muni spent his life in the current Indian state of Uttarakhand on the banks of the Ganga where Sage Vashishta had also resided with the Pandava brothers. Legend further states that Vyasa was a devotee of Lord Vishnu in one of his past lives when he was born as sage Apantaratamas. The knowledge of the Upanishads, Vedas, and Dharma Shastras was inherent in sage Apantaratamas, who was born as Veda Vyasa as per Lord Vishnu's desire. Works of Veda Vyas Muni The great sage Veda Vyas is known to be the author of a wide range of ancient Hindu texts which are very important and hold significance. The Mahabharata This famous Indian epic is said to have been the chronologist of Mahabharata and Veda Vyasa Muni also features a significant character in it. Veda Vyasa had requested Lord Ganesha to be the scribe of the epic while he narrates it. Lord Ganesha agreed to do so with the condition that the narration of Veda Vyasa would have to be without a pause. Vyasa accepted the condition and posed his condition that Lord Ganesha would have to understand the verses which would be narrated by him before writing it down. Sitting beside the bees tree, Veda Vyasa Muni connected through meditative mode to channel the texts. The partnership of Lord Ganesha, the transcriber, and Veda Vyasa Muni's narrator gifted us with the Mahabharata, 18 Puranas, and Upanishads. The basic essence of Mahabharata comes through in Jaya, which is a conversation between Dhritarashtra and his charioteer and advisor Sanjaya. Sanjaya had 
done a running commentary of all that was taking place on the battlefield of the Kurukshetra, describing war strategies adapted by the Kauravas and Pandavas. Military formation and everything in detail to Dhritarashtra. It's a great narrative with Dhritarashtra asking intermittent questions to Sanjay discussing situations in the war and getting emotional about the impending destruction and loss of kit and kin. The sacred Bhagavad Gita comprises 18 chapters of Veda Vyasa's Jaya, which is a brilliant combination of war, religion, history, geography, and morality. Puranas, treasured Hindu texts written by Veda Vyasa, that was considered as an encyclopedia of ancient history and legends. Veda Vyasa Muni and Brahma Sutras The Brahma Sutras are timeless texts written by Veda Vyasa Muni about Hindu philosophy, particularly Vedanta, which is promoted by Badarayana. Vaishnava Acharyas believed that Badarayana was actually Veda Vyasa himself as his ashramam was in Badari Shetram. However, some argue that the name Badarayana came from the Badara fruit found on the island where Vyasa was born. Recent historians suggest that Vyasa and Badarayana were different individuals. Despite these debates, Veda Vyasa is celebrated for his role as the compiler, author, and organizer of ancient Hindu texts, significantly contributing to their philosophical, historical, legendary, and cultural aspects. And this is the story of Guru Purnima.